This is the video on the fast Fourier transform. Now before we get into this too much, we want to look at why we even do the fast Fourier transform. We've already introduced the discrete Fourier transform. It worked just fine for moving from the time domain to the frequency domain. Why do we need something else? Well, as the name implies, the fast Fourier transform is fast. Alright, so how fast is the fast Fourier transform? Well, the fast Fourier transform is able to compute the transform in, well, the discrete Fourier transform is able to compute, uh, well, that has nothing to do with this. We'll get there in a minute. The discrete Fourier transform can compute it in, um, in about n squared, where n is the size of, of, of input, n squared operations. Well, the fast Fourier transform can compute in, let's move over, in order uh, n log n, a log base 2 of n. That's approximately how many how many operations that it takes for the fast Fourier transform. Now, it, let's let's plot this out to get a really good idea because this is sort of difficult to wrap your brain around until you really look at it. So, let's look here. And so let's say n equals uh, goes from 1 to let's say 50. And then let's plot out uh, n and uh, uh, n squared, n squared, and let's also plot out n and n uh, times 2 uh, or log 2 of n. And let's just see how this looks. All right, let's pull this down so you can see it better. And you can see that we really, really do a lot better. So this this yellow line is uh, n squared and the red line is n log n. Okay, so you can see that even with 50 uh, sample points, we're doing much better. Uh, if we just switch back over here and let's let n go to, oh, I don't know, let's let it go to 500. And now if we plot that out again uh, and then show the graph, you can see that this um, the fast Fourier transform is basically flatlined while the discrete Fourier transform is just growing and growing and growing and growing. So you can see the fast Fourier transform compared to the discrete Fourier transform really is uh, very fast. Okay, so now I can switch back over and look at the fast Fourier transform algorithm. So the algorithm for the fast Fourier transform we can derive here and I'm going to show that but we just start with the regular discrete Fourier transform and 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 as throughout this we need to assume that n equals 2 to the m so we have a power of a power of, of 2 uh, number of input points and so that's not really that that restrictive as you can see because you can always uh, sample you can usually in real applications sample evenly at a certain amount of points if, if that's if that's what you want to do so that's not a really uh, restrictive assumption uh, and then we say when fk is used, so I'm just denoting this because all throughout here I say I use fk sub k, and, and in all these instances you, we need to assume that k goes from 0 to n minus 1. Alright, so getting started here we have the standard discrete Fourier transform right here. Uh, the standard discrete Fourier transform we gave before, n, n equals 0 to n minus 1 of f sub n e to the minus k omega naught n. Okay, so that's that's our regular uh, uh, discrete Fourier transform. And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is split this into two separate parts. So we can go uh, from n equals 0 to n squared or n over 2 minus 1. So we're going halfway there. And then we go from halfway there, n over 2, all the way to n minus 1. So, so you see we've really done nothing here but split this into two separate parts. We've split that summation. Uh, the next thing that we can do is uh, here we have one of our indices starting at 0 and the other one starting at n over 2 and so uh, just to fix that problem we're gonna start this n equals 0 and, and it's going to n over 2 minus 1 and then we're gonna start this at m equals 0 we just introduce this substitution for m where m equals n minus n big n over 2 alright so then we we introduce that substitution there and so we go from m equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1 and then we have a similar f uh, sub, this is all sub, so don't be confused, the e is not uh, anything to do with this, this is just our sum index, f sub m plus n over 2 uh, uh, times e to the minus k omega naught 
uh, m plus n over 2. So we've just done uh, some little book work to unify the indices that we have. Uh, and then as we scroll down here we can see the rest of what happens. Uh, the next thing that we do is we separate the exponent. If you can see here we had this m here and we had this uh, plus n over 2 here. So all we do is we separate out, if you'll recall, uh, when we have this exponentiation and we have addition in the exponent, we can actually just uh, bring, uh, that's the same thing as being multiplied by e to the uh, n over 2 times everything else that was there. So we just do that. And so this, this component then gets split into uh, these two multiplicative components. So now we've separated the exponent. The rest of the equation stays the same. Um, and so then uh, we can just note that our, our omega naught equals uh, 2 pi over n. That's just uh, how we define it. And so what that means is, is we have this sum from n equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1 of e to the minus k omega naught n over 2. That's, that's this term right here. Okay, so we've got that term there. And what we can do with that is that's, that's also equal to this e to the minus k omega naught uh, n over 2 because the summation is doing nothing for us because we don't use the summation uh, in the index and so we can simplify that further uh, we can simplify it using this substitution here uh, we can simplify that to e to the minus pi i pi k where pi, uh, i is minus the, the square root of minus 1 which is just equal to minus 1 quantity to the k, minus 1 to the k alright so uh, that's interesting and, and what it what it ends up being then is a separation what what we'll do next is separate it into even and odd components but before we do that let's just write this term down so all we've done then is taken this term here right so we've taken this term here and we've put it out front here that's that term and we just changed the form of it and then we we finish unifying the summation notation so we can go from n equals zero to n over 2 minus 1, n equals 0 to n over 2 minus 1, and we can do that because uh, we're just going from m equals 0 to, to uh, n over 2 minus 1, so we really we were really weren't using uh, our m here uh, for anything special, so we can we can change that then back to an n, so now we have the same, we have a summation over the same two indices, which is excellent. So then, the next thing we do is we separate this into even and odd components. Let me scroll down so we can see the rest of it. We separate it into even and odd components. And that all comes from the fact that this is going to evaluate to be even sometimes and odd other times, right? This negative 1. And so we're going to have, we're going to have f n e to the minus k omega naught n, and it's either going to be plus or minus uh, this, this, this second term. And so uh, if it's plus, then that's what we get here. This is the even component. And if it's minus, well, then uh, we have this situation. And, and we, can simplify, we can simplify that down uh, to this situation. What, what I did is we had a, a 2K, minus, 2k plus 1 uh, because f to the 2K and f to the 2K plus 1, that's how we separate it into our even and odd components. And where I introduced this 2K plus 1 in the exponent where K was, uh, then I have to then uh, pull this just as I had done before, uh, the multiplying by the exponent, pull this other other component out. Okay, so what we've done then is we've we've separated this problem that was remember it was um, it did require uh, n squared operations, right? And now we've we've reduced it into uh, two separate components uh, that we can actually do together. And we just have to look if it's if it's even or odd that are um, that that require a number of computations of n squared over two, right? So we've we've completely we've completely halved uh, the number of operations that were required uh, to to compute the the discrete Fourier transform, and in fact. Uh, we can keep doing this and dividing it in half and dividing it in half. We can do this repeatedly until we get all the way down to n uh, log 2 uh, of n operations. And that is uh, where the efficiency of the, uh, of the 
discrete Fourier transform, uh, the fast Fourier transform uh, algorithm comes from. Now there are a few final words that we need to say about the um, the fast Fourier transform. Uh, the first thing is that that this is called the the algorithm that I've shown you here is called the Sunday Tukey algorithm. Okay, and uh, the visualization of what's going on here is shown in the following graph and, and, and this algorithm is is referred to as decimation in in frequency as opposed to the uh, the, the other algorithm that, that the book mentions which is the um, cooley tukey algorithm which which is decimation in time but for the for the flow graph for the decimation in frequency this is what we have so this is right from the book and and this is what they call a butterfly chart and they call it a butterfly chart because as you see we see we have uh, these crossing over uh, and adding to these and 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 then and so this this is the first step right of of dividing it into two pieces that we had so that was the first step and then uh, as I mentioned we can we can divide the next resulting algorithm that was size uh, n over 2 we can divide that into two pieces and we can continue dividing it down and so this just shows uh, for an 8 point uh, d uh, DFT so using the the Sandy Tukey algorithm for the FFT with an 8 point uh, uh, decimation in frequency so we start with 8 and then we we move uh, we have we have the initial crossover where we had divided into in in half so you could see that we had divided it in half there was one half there's the other half and then the next thing is of course where we divided it in half again where we had this half and this half right we divided that half again and we of course we divided this half uh, in half again too uh, and we continued doing that and so you can see uh, as we go through, what we come out with is our final answer, and these are called uh, butterfly graphs or butter butterfly. Um, it, it's a butterfly um, uh, behavior. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, let's see what else uh, might we call it? a butterfly network. That's what they call it, a butterfly network uh, that that represents the Sandy Tukey algorithm, and uh, the the other thing to be aware of is uh, that we've scrambled our bits here. So you, this is our f of 0, this is our f of 4, this is our f of 2, our f of 6, our f of 1, our f of 5, f of 3, uh, and, and our uh, f of 7. So we've, we've scrambled them and there's a process that you can use uh, to unscramble them called called bit reversal but just note that when we do this we do scramble our coefficients but uh, that's that's essentially the fast Fourier transform uh, and again let me just write down here the well no I don't, I don't need to the, the the other algorithm which is decimation in time again is called the um, Cooley Tukey uh, algorithm but both are comparable they both achieve roughly the same uh, the same uh, behavior as we looked, we saw over here in in our MATLAB chart. They both achieve this this um, analog n uh, operations as compared to the n squared. So they're both of comparable efficiency. Uh, this is just the the algorithm that we learned here. That's the fast Fourier transform.